The third episode really is about the introduction of new environments and new characters, which really is what the entire third season is about. Governor, they call you that? Some nicknames stick whether you want them to or not. It's the introduction of the most seminal villain from the comic book, the governor, and his community of Woodbury, which is such a contrast from the prison. We're separated from Rick and the gang. We actually don't see them in the show for an entire episode. Walk with me really has a couple of meanings. One is Andrea is now walking on this journey with Michonne. They've bonded over the months that they've spent surviving on their own. And it's also walk with me into a new community. Walk with me into the governor's world of Woodbury. The helicopter represents hope. I mean, we have been looking for the National Guard since this all went down. And I think Andrea just hopes that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe that this is just the beginning towards them finding safety and security and life. What really affects her is seeing the young man who's severed in two. There's just a moment there of, this is like a flash of your past, of your family, of familiarity that you've, you know, you've somewhat deadened yourself to, but not completely. Fan out. And then she gets back to business. These are, you know, a pretty powerful looking group of men who are now on site and who are taking over the area that they're in. And so they're really trying to take in, what is this? Who are these people? But at the same time, you definitely don't want your own freedoms impinged upon because it's very difficult to just openly trust people in this realm. And Michonne is a hyper vigilant, hyper aware. So the idea of her pets starting to actually draw attention to them they have to go. It's just a pragmatic choice. It's about what do I need to do in this moment to make sure we proceed in the way I want us to proceed to the next moment. When Andrea sees Merle, it's like seeing a ghost from the past. There's some pretty bad history there. I was about a big hug for your old pal Merle. Nothing good can come out of this. It's just pure shock and terror. Well, here I am. <laughs> kind of scares the hell out of me. I don't have a gun on me anymore, and he's got the stump, and he doesn't know that we went back for him, and I don't know if he's looking for blood or vengeance. It's a very dangerous dance. Welcome to Woodbury. The governor really runs Woodbury. That's his deal. He's created this town. It's his town. I think he decides who comes to his town. He decides who stays. And he would hope that they would see what a, a great place it is to be. Governor, they call you that? Some nicknames stick whether you want them to or not. What we see in the comic novel is a man whose character is fully formed. We don't see that here yet. Tell me where they are, and I promise, if they're still alive, I'll bring them in. The character that you love emerges. He doesn't come at you fully formed. But he's created a security for people in a very insecure world, and that's no mean feat. So he's uh, quite a tough character. You'll be more comfortable here. Not the Four Seasons, but there's a hot shower. Water's limited, so I'll keep it short. They've formed this little town, and the fact that people can survive in different ways in this world, you can actually build walls and organize and, and form this little community. You were out there for a long time. And while you were, yeah. the governor was doing this. It's kind of a revelation, I think, for you know people that'll be watching this show. It's kind of a expression of all the different kinds of stories that we can tell on The Walking Dead. It's rather beautiful, and they've built a way of life their own sense of civilization amidst all this chaos. Hey, months. Hard to believe you ladies lasted so long out there. I think with anybody that comes into the town, they have to be careful. But he admires them. Anybody who can exist for eight months out there, just the two of them, they're people to be reckoned with. We're taking back what's ours. Civilization. We will rise again. Only this time, we won't be eating each other. He explains it in a way that makes sense to me. They captured us because they didn't know who we were or if we were a threat. 
she's battling an emotional state, which is rage and frustration. Being in this place against her will and dealing with these people, but also I have to figure out who these people are and what the situation is. And she doesn't feel anything good about where she is. I don't trust him. Michelle is very intuitive. She's always thinking about what is the worst case scenario that we could be stepping into. I give this a day or two, that's all I'm asking. I don't want to go. I just want a little bit more time here because it's nice to finally breathe. It's nice to not be sick and scared for once. This is how these two women differ. There's a bit of a conflict there in terms of the two of them because Michonne likes to be in full control of whatever she steps towards. People seem happy. I see pregnant women in the streets. I see children laughing. Be thankful for what you have. Watch out for each other. Andrea gave up dreaming and hoping a long time ago, and it's almost too good to be true, but it seems like it's possible. She so wants to believe this is real. She so wants to believe that this way of life can be maintained. That's what she's wanted from the beginning, is to feel like she belongs somewhere, and that life and humanity and civilization can continue. To civilization, then. On the surface of Woodbury, that's what's going on. And then you dig a little deeper and you realize that Woodbury is one of the ugliest places in the zombie apocalypse. The Walking Dead. All new episodes, Sunday nights at 9, only on AMC. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com.